We have some really innovative uh, recipes today, and, and every, almost every one that comes up is going to probably get that same label on it. Christine Tibbs from Silverdale, over on the other side of the, so the pond there, uh, is going to give us garlic mashed potatoes with rutabagas and parmesan. We used to have rutabagas when I was a, a kid. We'd have it like maybe a couple times a week instead of mashed potatoes. But I haven't had rutabagas in a long, long time. Where did you come up with the idea? Well, first of all, my mom used to make them when uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas rolled around. And as a child, I hated them. I, I didn't even <laughs> like mashed potatoes, honestly. Really? Yes, but as I got older and I moved away from home, I started to really miss my mom's potatoes. Sure. And I liked the rutabagas in them after a while. And I started making them myself. Now, she made them really plain. Mm -hmm. Um, she made them with the butter and the milk and the rutabaga and the potato, but I added a little twist to them by adding a little bit of parsley for color, garlic for flavor, and um, the Parmesan cheese just to add some richness to it. Okay. So well, where let's do we cook. start? Let's see All what's right. Going on. Well, first, what you want to do is you want to peel a bit of uh, potato. You can use any potatoes you want, whatever you prefer. I right. prefer a waxier potato like the red potato or a golden Yukon or, Yukons, yeah. or okay. white potatoes. Um, most people use russets, I believe, yep. for mashed okay. potatoes. But me, on the other hand, I prefer... And the waxier potatoes really give you a better result than the russets. It's creamier, yeah. smoother. All right, and you're going you're gonna to peel the potato. I tend to peel really thick into the potato. I waste potato. My, a couple of my friends used to get on to me for this. but. You know, it's been a long time since I've seen someone use a paring knife to peel a potato. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't use. She's the done potato a few of these, George. I can tell that she's peeled a few potatoes in her lifetime. Yes. Can I have Wait. the butcher knife over there? Sure, the the big one. Okay. Yeah. Now, for the potatoes, you're going to um, you're going to quarter these as best as okay. you can. All right. Now, keep in mind that rutabagas take forever to cook. My mom used a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. That's a great idea. Yeah. But um, rutabagas take probably about three to four times longer to cook. They just they just are really dense and they just seem to really take a long time. It takes time a while to, to get through. Yeah. So I always pre cook them first and then we're going to put them in the pot and boil them for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're, until they're done. Okay. 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 And then. So folks, this is a rutabaga. If you don't know what one looks yeah. like, this is it. And these are a little harder to peel, and that I, you can't use a you can't potato use a peeler, peeler on these, for these. No, because these are dense. They're very dense. So, Chris, do you usually cut these? Is that, is that from the potato family, basically? It's a root vegetable, it's a root but no, okay. it's not from the potato family. It, it smells if. I had a friend who didn't know what one tasted like. She had never eaten one, uh -huh. and I describe it as kind of a radishy smell yeah, to it. Yeah, it has a radishy that, smell. That's it does. a good, dis good it, description. It looks like a large purple and white radish. Right. Yeah. You can you can use turnips. Turnips cook much quicker than rutabagas do, or they seem to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when you cut these, be really careful because they're hard to cut. And you, do you cut these in smaller pieces than potatoes because they take so much longer to and cook? And this one doesn't want to cooperate with me today. <laughs> well, let's do this. This, yeah. for demonstration here, you want to cut them into small dices. Okay, so we're looking at about half to three quarters of an inch dice for this like so that it like cooks that. faster. Otherwise, it's going to take forever mm -hmm. to cook like a that. really large piece of Right, this. and when they cook, they get yellow like this. Okay, so through the right. magic of television, this is what it's going to look like after you've started to cook. And do you start these in cold or hot water, Chris? Cold. Okay. And you want salted water in here. Now, generally, I'll, I'll use chicken broth to cook the potatoes in, mm -hmm. but I've already pre-cooked the potatoes, so I didn't want to put them in chicken broth again. So to heat them up, we just put them in the water. So what's our next step here? Okay, what you want to do is we want to drain them. Does it matter which uh, one Potatoes first. first. All right. There you go. We'll just keep them there for a second. Okay. Let's put it over okay. here. All right. I'll take the bowl. All right. Thanks, George. That makes room. <laughs> All right. I'll take the the uh, butter there. There you go. Okay. Now I agree with Harvey. Everything's better with butter. <laughs> <laughs> If it's not butter, it's not All right. mashed potatoes. However, my family's lactose intolerant, 
And um, so I don't get to make these kind of potatoes very often, so every chance I get, I use the so cream and the butter. So for the lactose intolerance, you use margarine? I use soy milk, and I use new co-margarine, which has no whey or milk solids in it. Great. And um, I use Romano sheep's cheese instead of the Romano. Most Rom good Romanos are with sheep's cheese. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Regular real stuff Romanos is. have some milk in them. Mm -hmm. So okay, that's so what do I go from here with. All right, uh, we want to take the potatoes. Okay. Let's, a neat Let's see if we can do this way. gracefully without splashing. Yeah, do it very well. All right, now I think. I think we'll mash a little bit. We'll okay. add a little bit of the milk. Half and half I'm using. You can use cream. Cream's a little too rich for me in particular. It's all to taste, isn't it? It is. Sure. All right. You want to mash these babies? Oh, these are mashing better than the last ones. Looks like they were cooked to the absolute perfect doneness for mashing. Yes. So Chris, is there some way that you test your potatoes to tell if they're done to the point of one? I stick a fork this? in them, and if the fork goes e cleanly through easily, that's... They're done. They're okay. done. And if you overcook them, they get kind of weird tasting. Well, they get mushy too. The, the yeah, yeah, they absorb yeah. too much water, then they don't mash right. well. Now what we want to do is add some Parmesan. I use about a cup. Shame on me. <laughs> You don't eat these every day, right? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to add some garlic, probably about a teaspoon. And this okay. is garlic powder? Garlic powder. Um, I've also done it with roasted garlic, mm -hmm. oh, I bet that's which lovely. is really good. And I, I like, I prefer seasoning salt or kosher salt. Okay. And I don't use a whole lot. We do that to taste. Well, there's always a lot of salt in the cheese that you put in there. Right. And some pepper. And then pepper for a little black speck going on. Let's well, some um, some of that. Let's throw in. Oh, we want to drain yeah, this. Yeah, There we go. Get okay, you ready? Okay. This is a neat drainer, by the way. And these will um, melt the cheese a bit. Right. All that heat going in there. We're probably gonna have to add some. There we go. There we go. Now okay. you can make this as smooth. Oh wow! You can when make the it heat as hit all those seasonings that were in there, I it know. just bursted out of that bowl. I wish you all at home could smell this. Oh yeah! And this is a potato you don't need gravy with. Indeed this not. is. A, you can also another twist on this is you can put it in the oven with cheese on top. More Parmesan cheese. Parmesan and <laughs> oh heck yeah! <laughs> Bring on the cheese. Yeah. Well, being from Wisconsin, that. Uh, that strikes home pretty well. It sure does. My mother was born inches. in Pennsylvania. My father was born in New Jersey. And I've lived all over. And this is my favorite place to be. Yeah, Seattle, Washington. Indeed. indeed. God's country. <laughs> all right. OK, now some people like chunky mashed potatoes. I don't care either way. But they so, don't have to be perfect. Chris, is this a dish you can make ahead and put on hold? Um, yeah, because you know what? It tastes better the next day. It's one, ah, of, those, great. It's one of those dishes well, where the Well, with all the, the, all the different tastes in there, I think it probably, as they meld together, it would make a different taste. Okay, I'm the second day is almost different from the first. And once you, once you get it this far, in. what do we do next? Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit more cream in. Okay, and then we need to taste. Oh, I hear stir. George getting this taste. I'm getting our, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's have a taste here. Go for it. Oh my. Mmm. This is great. That's very, very wonderful. nice. Wonderful, wonderful like dish. Those? Yep, I have to have another taste here. Yeah, now I'll, I'll... you have to try them with the cheese on top mm -hmm. in the oven. Yes, indeed. And, and when it's done, let's, just, let's put it over there and show our viewers what it looks like. And, and once again, no need for a gravy on that at all. Nope. That's no, no, no. That's a taste all it's by lovely, itself, and it's lovely. wonderful. And we're staying on long enough to get, well, just a minute, I got another taste. So, folks, <laughs> call get the book. You're going to want this recipe. Be sure and get the video so that you can see how she did it. 1-800-443-1999. We got two recipes that are worth the book. Mm -hmm. Call us right now. 
Thank you, Christine, very much. You're welcome. Super. Thanks. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm.